Get out the way! Get out the way! Get... This man is not a professional soldier. I've got a casualty over them. Get it out of back! He is one of over 500 members of the Territorial Army who are risking their lives as part of the British Army in Afghanistan. Get a baseline on here! You just push on constantly. You know, you, you haven't got time to, you know, take time out to worry or to think. At home, George is an electrician yeah. and father of two. You know where Daddy's going next month, don't you? Where? To Afghanistan. He will be serving alongside PE teacher Daniel Majid. A lot of people used to take the mick out of the fact that I was in the TA with a toy soldier and... I need to do it. If I didn't go, I see it as me sort of ducking a challenge or missing a challenge out. We have been granted unprecedented access to the stories of the men and women of the TA and the challenges the families face who've been left behind. I was wrong a little bit because I don't want him to get killed. There was a policewoman and a civic chap. I said, it's Daniel, isn't it? And he said, yes, will you sit down? And then your heart goes bum, 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 and, you know, it just, when he said that, actually, you think the worst. My dad is in the army and he's a very brave soldier. My dad is an army man. I want to be in the army like my dad. Their dad, George Moffat, is not a full-time soldier. He's a 35-year-old self-employed electrician. I was in the um, cadet force when I was young and I actually enjoyed it and I, in a way I missed it to be honest with you so I thought why not go back to it you know something in uniform. Through the territorial army George has volunteered to serve in Afghanistan. He's had a difficult year financially so the money he earns from going on tour will come in very handy. There's not a lot of work coming in at the moment just enough to time me over. So for us, you know, the TA did actually help us an extra income sort of thing, you know, with the mortgage to pay and stuff like that. But this also means that George is going to be away from his two young sons for six months. I've got two boys. Um, Luke, he's six. Um, Callum, he's nine. They live with the mums, they do. The two separate mums. He was always, he's always been into that kind of stuff, but I never, ever dreamt. I never thought he'd go out and do something like that, especially with them having two kids. I love that, but, uh, you know, if you, that's what he wants to do. But uh, it, it, it did, it shocked me. No, don't leave, come on. Come on, get in. On your seat. With two months before George deploys, time with his sons is precious, and he takes the opportunity to relive a personal childhood memory with them in Wales. Well, <laughs> it's gone. Good boy, well done. Yeah, I have mine. Enjoy that, Cal. Yeah. Well done, son. I remember coming here as a kid. I enjoyed it as a child, so of course, well, why not them as well? <laughs> I think this is like basically a memory for them as well, something they'll look back on the next couple of months while I'm not there. It's also time for George to prepare them for the fact he will be going away. You know where Daddy's going next month, don't you? Where? Afghanistan. Yeah. Are well, you happy that I'm going? No. I know. You know I'll be alright though, don't you? Yeah? No. I'll keep me at. What do you mean now? You're not happy that I'm going? No, Stephen. Luke, come on, why yeah. not? Some things, you know, Dad's got to do, hasn't he? It's my job, isn't it? I want all these nice things in life, bikes, you know, computers and that. You know, they've all got to be paid for, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah? So you're going to be good for your mum while I've gone, yeah? Yeah. Promise? Yeah. Promise me, yeah? Good. George will be joining 2 Para, one of the British Army's most distinguished battalions, who frequently carry out some of the most dangerous operations in Afghanistan. Joining George to serve with 2 Para is Daniel Majid, a 25-year-old PE teacher from Leeds. Excellent, well done, that's perfect. Afghanistan, I, I need to do it. A lot of people say, well, why don't you just not go? But 
If I didn't go, I see it as me sort of ducking a challenge or missing a challenge out. Sports fanatic Dan joined the TA Parachute Regiment four years ago to test himself and push his body to its limits. Good. I've been out to Belize, been over to Germany, been out to America, done some foreign jump courses as well. It's been great. And then when I got the call, it was like, right, well, that's just the next step. It's, you know, it's the next challenge. That's what I've got to do. And here I am. Unlucky, big impact. Dan spent a lot of his childhood at his grandparents. From a young age, it was clear to his gran he was an adventurous and physical young boy. Climbing trees and having bonfires. Well, yes, they enjoy it, don't they? They like to be up things and climbing about and then shaking the ladder when the others want to come up. <laughs> Keep them girls out. <laughs> Don't want them up here. <sighs> For Dan, teaching PE is a dream job and he's a natural at it. OK, not quite 12 seconds on that one. He is ridiculously uh, popular with the kids. I hate him for that. Yeah, he's fantastic. The teacher, Mr. Dan Majid. <laughs> Today, Dan is taking assembly as a way of saying farewell to the whole school. It's a very proud moment when you get to put this on. Every time you put it on, you're assuming you're ready for anything, OK? This ISAF, International Security Assistant Force, we're out there to, to build the security of Afghan. And this one here, this is the wings, this is to signify that I'm, I'm qualified to jump out of planes. Quite low. I'm going to be, uh, you know, be patrolling around the, uh, the local towns and villages. And that's, that's probably going to be one of the most dangerous jobs because of the threat of IEDs that are on, out on the ground. I've done it myself. So when Getting I injured call, would jeopardise Dan's future career. So he's already thought about what to do if the worst happens. I've been and done it. You know, if I lose a limb or become disabled, I'd try and look for a sport that I Paralympic, become a Paralympic athlete. Thank you, Mr. Vijay, for coming Thank in you. today. There is a chance it will it will change me. It could be it could be for the better. It could be worse. It's going to be an experience that. I'm not going to forget. <laughs> Just playing them waves. Last day today, really. A little bit. I think it's kicking in a little bit now that, you know, the reality that I'm going. George is trying everything to lessen the impact of his six months away. I sort of broke it down to weeks. I said, you know, with 26 weeks, I think it sounds a little bit better with them, you see. Um, I think they're handling it quite well, to be honest with you. Enjoying themselves, anyway. Look, lads, we've got a fish. Me? We've got two. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let them feel good about it. I just want to get out there and I'll crack on with the job. Look, your one's dead. It's not. Why is it playing dead, then? It just needs to get a bit of water in its lungs. <laughs> yeah, I'll see it's gone. Off it's gone. You've gone, boys. That's them. Approximately 9,500 UK troops are currently deployed in Afghanistan. Over 500 are members of the public who have volunteered to serve on the front line. Electrician George and PE teacher Daniel are two of them. And after six months of intensive training, they are on their way to serve with the battle-hardened troops of the Parachute Regiment. I think this is um, as real as it gets really. There's no turning back here now. This is the final step in the UK, realistically. So, the final step. I'm looking forward to it now. It's good. A lot of people used to take take the mick out of the fact that I was in the TA with a toy soldier and doing a real job now. I'm going to show them that, yeah, I can do it. I want to do it as much as anyone else.
the next six months, Dan and George's new home will be Patrol Base 1, also known as PB1. Situated 70 kilometers east of Camp Bastion, Patrol Base 1 is an isolated desert outpost. Running daily operations into Taliban-occupied areas, it's one of the most dangerous places in the world. It's a bit of a culture shock at first for TA when they come across to a professional regiment like uh, Two Power or Three Power to uh, work closely with us and realise that it's not a hobby anymore. When you come to places like this, the job gets more serious. A lot more in your face. Two months ago, George Moffat was earning money wiring houses. Now, his job is to patrol Afghan villages, making sure they are free from Taliban intimidation and heroin smuggling. Sometimes, you know, you can go out on patrol, you can get no contact at all. Over days, you can go out, and before you know it, you're getting hit. Um, rounds are coming in left, right and centre. There's RPGs, there's UDLs, um, and there is the worst-case scenario, improvised explosives device. policewoman and a civic chap. They sort of knocked at the door and said, and I sort of opened my mouth and I said, now what have I done? And he said, nothing, can we come in? And as soon as he got in and I saw the tie, I thought, I said, it's Daniel, isn't it? And he said, yes, will you sit down? PE teacher Daniel Majid had only been in Afghanistan for six weeks when he was blown up by an IED whilst on foot patrol near Patrol Base 1, Helmand Province. There was a policewoman and a civvy chap. They sort of knocked at the door and said, and I sort of opened my mouth and I said, now what have I done? And he said, nothing, can we come in? I had um, a message to ring the lieutenant colonel in, in, in the parachute regiment. Straight after school we got an email saying from the head teacher asking us to go into the assembly hall that we needed to be in an urgent meeting. And he came in and as soon as he got in and I saw the tie I thought, I said it's Daniel isn't it? And he said yes, will you sit down? We were just told straight away I've got some bad news about one of our colleagues. The, the whole hall went absolutely silent. And I'm sat there thinking, you know, tell me he's not dead. That he'd actually been killed. <sighs> That's what went through my mind straight away, with him saying that, I think. Well, it's the, uh, I think it's the worst noise I think I've ever heard. This is the alley that Daniel was walking down when the IED exploded. Nicknamed Death Alley, it is frequently patrolled by Dan and George's regiment, Two Para. We found out we were going to be the lead element, I'm going to be the violent man, which means you're going to look for the mines, look for the IEDs, clear the route. We find a, a couple of bits of metal that we're a bit un unsure about, but down that alley, it was, there was lots of metal down there, you know, bits of shrapnel, bits of wire, bits of this, you know, cans, things like that, it was littered. So you were finding all sorts of stuff. And I was going to clear a ditch that ran along the side of the track. As I'm clearing the ditch, that's when it, that's when it went back. I, I'm just sort of dazed and uh, my arms swinging from a new point. Crawling out of the ditch, put my rifle down, and then it was fully compounded by the, the gush of blood that started to come from my arm. Suddenly thought, I've lost, I've lost my arm. My arm's come off. <laughs> 